What's up everybody? Welcome to a tutorial today where we're going to go over frequency separation. And no, it's not as hard as you may think. So what is frequency separation? Well, first off, it's a way that you can get your skin textures and tones to be more fluid, blend more into each other, stop with that rough, pory, deep texture. Um, frequency separation can be used for a quite beautiful, smooth, magical look, fantasy look. Um, a lot of professionals use this in, in professional magazines where they want a model looking absolutely flawless. There's different degrees to how far you can go into using the frequency separation depending on how smooth you want the skin to actually be, but it's not as complicated as it seems. So let's jump right into our Photoshop and get this thing going. So what we're gonna do here first is I'm gonna go here and open up Photoshop and I'm gonna go in and drag a picture from my desktop that I have ready for this previously into Photoshop. Wonderful. And now once you get your picture in Photoshop, all I'm gonna do is make it a little bit bigger here so we can see the, the skin tones and see everything here that's going on with the face. Um, what I always do is I like to first click on our layer, hit Command J, and that's gonna duplicate your layer for you. That way, no matter what, you can always come back to this base layer if you mess up the anything that you're doing in Photoshop. So this is a, a quite awesome option that we have here. So I'm just gonna hide this bottom layer, select this top layer, and the first thing I wanna do after I've duplicated the layer is duplicate it two more times. And on the second layer, the second duplicate, we're gonna make a name and we're gonna call it Blur. The next layer above that, we're gonna rename Texture. Now we're gonna take these two layers that we've selected and we're gonna go and group these layers. I'm gonna call the group FS, short for Frequency Separation. I'm gonna open up that group and I'm gonna minimize or hide the texture layer. I'm going to select the blur layer. We're gonna go into Filter. We're going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we wanna make this just blurry enough that it's gonna fade every crevice, every pore, just enough. And so we're probably gonna leave this probably at about, hmm, we'll throw it at 8.2 pixels. Hit okay, awesome. Now we're gonna select our texture layer. We're going to make it visible again by unhiding it. And we're gonna go up to image. We're gonna select apply image. And then we're gonna go here into where it says the layer option. And we're gonna select, we want this effect placed over the blur layer. And then this is important here. Next, what we wanna do is go into the blending mode and select subtract. Now, if your scale and offset, don't read these two numbers here with both scale at two and offset at 128, you wanna make sure that you get these numbers to what I have here on my screen because this is the go-to number for making frequency separation with this effect, this, the way that we, I do it, come to life. This is the only way I've learned, this is the only way I know, and it's simple and easy works best. So we're gonna hit okay after we have everything looking like we do here in this apply image box. Awesome. Now with the texture layer still selected, we wanna go to blend mode and we wanna go and select linear light. Now look at that. It's bringing our picture back to what we saw originally before we started messing with all of the Gaussian blurs and subtracting and applying the image. Um, and I'll show you this by hiding this group that we have here and then you can see it reveals the base layer that we originally started with. And then if you just reappear that, that group, it's, you see that there's nothing else that's different from, from what we started. So now that we have this, the hardest part's out of the way, believe it or not. 
we want to select our blur layer. We want to zoom in on where we want to make this effect happen. And we want to click our lasso tool. And we wanted to start off by selecting a small part of the face that we see tones that should be more blended together. Maybe this cheek highlights into the, the cheek shadows right here. So I'm just going to select this section. Awesome. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard. This is going to bring up our mask, just a temporary mask of how much feather of our effect is, is on the image. I think we might need a little bit more of a feather, so I'm going to go up to 30 pixels. Awesome. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard again, and I'm going to go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to increase this probably to about 21, enough so that the texture starts to smooth out underneath. Awesome. Hit OK. We're going to hit Command D for deselect, and we're just going to repeat that process. So I think next we'll select underneath this cheek here. There's some big pores here that I'll smooth out. So we'll go again, Filter, Blur. Gaussian blur. Wonderful. Awesome. Deselect. And right here next to the mouth, we'll hit this section next. For this section, I'm going to go a little bit bigger and blend all these tones together. Blur. Gaussian blur. Awesome. Okay. Deselect. And let's select this area here underneath the left side of her face. Oh, well, I mean the right side, I guess, depending on which way you're looking at it. All perspectives are a good perspective. Whatever works, works, you know what I mean? So we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur. Awesome, I think that's a perfect amount still. Command D for deselect. And down underneath the chin. This doesn't need much, I don't think. We'll go maybe to the left of her mouth a little bit. Awesome. Filter, Gaussian blur, apply that. Command D select. And now let's check out the forehead. Um, it looks like the tones here are a little bit more brown in this section above this right eyebrow. And it goes a little bit lighter into the mid forehead. So I'm gonna blend these two sections a little bit more together. That way we can get this thing all looking smooth and wonderful. Awesome. And with just that, with just what we did, let me show you what happened here. Without it, with frequency separation halfway applied, we're not even done yet, but check out the difference in the face. It completely smooths it out. It completely changes the way that your photos are gonna become. I mean, you can take anybody's texture of their face and make it a lot smoother, and you're gonna get a professional grade look. I mean, this is exactly what professionals do to get their smooth skin tones, their skin textures. So this is an important thing. And a lot of people maybe are intimidated by the term frequency separation because it's a big term, right? It's kind of scary to be like, oh no, what are we gonna do with this thing? I don't know how to go about it. But like you've seen, it's, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and jump back into the computer and finish up wrapping up this effect. So let's reappear this frequency separation layer. Let's click our texture. Let's go into our clone stamp tool. I'm gonna to select the brush as a nice feathered soft round brush. Awesome. And all I wanna do here is I wanna clone pieces of the texture that I think are still a little too rough looking on the surface. And this is not gonna affect any of the, the tones underneath any of the blending underneath that we've already previously done with this blur layer here. The texture layer is something completely different and that's what's wonderful about frequency separation is you totally can separate your workflow from working with the actual texture to the actual tones of the skin of the of whatever you're working with. So let's go here and select a piece of the skin that's a little bit more smoother with alt select and then all you have to do is paste by clicking over the areas that you want to smooth out. And this is just going to replace the areas that you've picked with your selection brush in an area that's smoother and you just paste it over an area that's a little bit more rough. Wow, huh? Just like that. It's it's pretty simple, guys. It's it's nothing hard, nothing complicated. And that's what I love about this. When you find out and you start to learn things like this, it becomes a lot easier to yourself and you're like, "Wow. 
This is so awesome because this is gonna change the game with my photos. I think we are looking pretty good here, guys. I'm just about done. Awesome. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna hide the group all together to show you guys what the face looks like without the effect. So this is without the effect and here's with the effect. Wow, insane. That's it for me guys. So if you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe and give me a nice fat thumbs up on this video. It's much appreciated and stay tuned for future content to come. These tutorials are, are super simple for me to walk through. So if you guys have any questions about what I've done here or what you may be struggling with on your own, please drop a comment below. I'll help you. I'll gladly help you on anything you need. Um, figuring out with Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, stuff like this. You name it, I'll do my best to help you out. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching this and have yourself a wonderful day. Cheers.